Welcome back to Mobile Adventures. So, slight change in plans. On our last episode, we mentioned that we were going to go ahead and start getting that tank cleaned out and go ahead and get everything out removed. Just to make room, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and work on getting that sink and that toilet removed just to get them out of the way. Give me some more working room down here uh, to make everything easier to get to. So, let's get going. if this cabinet were salvageable but they carved it up to make everything fit there's really nothing here of any value so we're going to go ahead and just kind of tear this thing apart to get it out hey everyone and i know that you actually enjoyed in the pilot episode seeing the camaraderie between the wife and i and we apologize that there's not been a, there's not a lot of that in this video here this project sort of jumped up and bit us and we had to kind of get it fixed and out of the way. So again, our apologies on that. Plus, I kind of lost the wife to March Madness, so maybe once basketball season's open, she'll have more time to... Woo! Occasionally you will hear a no! Okay. I have rednecked up many a thing in my day, but this house has pretty much competed with anything I could ever do. One thing that they loved to use here is Flex Seal. And while in the commercials it looks like the best thing since sliced bread, all it does is gum everything up so that someone who actually knows how to stop a leak can't. So looks like I'm stuck with Flex Seal and electrical tape all over the plumbing fixtures. So let's see if we can manage to get these apart or not. Reaper, hopefully not the exploding kind. Look at my husband on a creeper. That's a nice everything you have there. You can have something happen to it. What? It's a meme, you wouldn't get it. My husband's on a creeper, creeper. Creeper, creeper, my husband's on a creeper all day long. I hope there's no water in that pipe. Oh, there's water in it. Man, there it goes. <laughs> Really? Sound effects? Why not? I can sit here and pull all of that electrical tape off and try to get it unscrewed and possibly even fight with all kinds of flex seal. Or I can do this. You know a job's gone south when you pull out the Sawzall. Much faster. Now in theory, the valves are turned off. So the hot and the cold water are also turned off. Since we're planning on cutting all of this out, I can either fight with that tape and that flex seal or I can just keep cutting stuff I think I'll keep cutting stuff well you can either be right or you can be lucky thank God I'm lucky Okay, I'm 
fighty the flex seal now. If only I could see better. That works. Oh yeah. Yeah, that flex seal is not coming off. So that faucet's gonna stay attached to the sink. We'll just break the rest of the cabinet off, carry the sink out in one piece, and this project will be done. everything and the kitchen sink well bathroom sink but you get the idea we got rid of the broken sump pump the drain lines that went to it as well as the bathroom sink that was located down here in the basement today we will work on getting rid of the toilet and then it's gonna be time for a dump run and a fire pile after that, we'll get the plumbing lines removed and then we will have a lot more room to work over here to work on getting to the sump pump itself, the actual container that's in the concrete floor. So, let's get to it. Okay, we got this area cleaned up. Now let's see what we can do as far as removing everything. First things first, see if I can get some more of the water out of this tank just so it doesn't drip into the floor. As you can see, just from flushing it, the, uh, there's water around the side. Gaskets on this thing were shot. The plumbing's leaking. I mean, this whole thing has just been a disaster. So that's one of the reasons we just want to get it out from down here and just make this area a lot more usable for us with space. So we're gonna get these two bolts pulled out, get this top tank off. Then we'll get the two bottom bolts, bolts pulled off and get the whole thing off. We'll go ahead and get the, to the seat off just to get some of the stuff out of the way as well and let's see what we can see what we make happen. a wrench and it's like oh this is easy you use your fingers oh my god it's like god great Like they had used some shims underneath it. So they've been using for I think for 400 years the same wax ring for toilets. Basically it's a gasket but it's a big hunk of wax. It's all it is. When you set the toilet down over your bolts the wax just squeezes into all the nooks and crevices around there to form a gasket seal in case you ever wondered how that worked okay now that the pump the sink and the toilet are out now to move over and start working on 
the plumbing. So basically we're just going to make sure everything is disconnected to here. And these two cold lines, two cold water lines, and one hot water line go up the wall and over and then they go down and connect into the plumbing underneath the bathroom upstairs. I could just trim them here but this is a good opportunity to carry it farther back. The plumbing that is mostly in here now is poly is just the short name for it. A lot of people you know may know it as gray pipe. It was the precursor to the PEX that most homes use now. The initial gray pipe poly had a problem and the rings would chew through it with age and cause a lot of moisture leaking problems. Big lawsuits, the whole nine. The poly that's in here used different connectors. It doesn't have that problem but it's still a different kind of pipe than everything else. So one of the things that we've been slowly working on doing is getting it out of here. So this might be a good opportunity to go ahead and back all of this out, carry it back and just get rid of the entire lines. Or just to keep my life simple, I may come in here and just cap them off just to get rid of these valves to uh, make it short and simple. We'll see. But for now, we'll go ahead and just start getting this unattached from the wall just to get the process started. While we are on the subject of plumbing, I want to bring up a little discussion. Every time they come up with something better, it's to save time. Back in the olden days, well, at least for, for, for me, it was iron pipe but iron pipe was a pain in the butts. Then they came up with copper, a little bit faster to install. Then copper got replaced by the poly, but it had problems, so they replaced it with the PEX, which was better. Now, the new thing seems to be these things that are called, I think, shark bite. So you don't even have to crimp it. You basically just cut the pipe, stick one on, and plug the other one in. Everyone I have heard talk about says these things are great. But when you look at a pipe, and I can sit there and twist the pipe inside the connector, I'm sorry, I do not get a warm fuzzy that that is a good solid connection that's never going to leak. End rant here. I'm sure they're great. Everyone's blah, blah, blah. But I will never use these things. PEX at a minimum is the way I'm going to go. Just thought I would share my opinion on that. Feel free to uh, give your opinion below. Especially if you're in plumbing and you've used these shark bites. Have you ever actually had one go bad? Are, are they really as good as everyone claims? Thanks. Okay, I think we've had a slight change of plans. Initially, the plan was to go ahead and start removing the water lines that are hanging down and go ahead and feed all the way back into the plumbing. But at this point, these lines may or may not come in handy for something. So for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and leave these here and go ahead and move into the water tank, well, into the sump pump basin that's in the concrete floor still. Um, the way the floor was poured around that, I'm probably gonna have to cut that into chunks to get it out. Like I said, the top of it is completely messed up. I don't know if I want to go with a shallower tank that's actually designed for a regular sump pump or get a deeper one that will go deeper into the ground to allow more water to seep in from underneath the foundation. I'm still sort of debating on that. But for the time being, we're going to go ahead and skip moving into the plumbing lines here. Go ahead and leave those in and start moving into that tank. So now I need to start getting that tank emptied out and probably cut up into pieces to actually get it out of the ground. And then we'll see what we're up against and what's gonna be next. I may need to actually get a concrete saw to start digging into that concrete foundation to make more room. I do have a hammer drill that can drill through it, but that's not exactly a pretty cut uh, chiseling it up with that. So, you know, still sort of debating, but yeah, long story short, we're gonna go ahead and end this video here. Um, It'll be a new episode to start getting into that tank and see where we take it from there. So stay tuned. Thanks.
Should we do a bad lip reading? Bam! Bam, bam! No. Oh. I should just publish this thing. Bam, bam, bam! Maybe I need my own channel away from you.